Whoa, stay tuned to this bogus episode of Sega Talk while we cover all things TMNT, the Hyperstone Heist on the Sega Genesis. We discuss the short length of the game, compare it to other time-traveling turtle games, and more on this Dimension X episode of Sega Talk. Sega Bits presents Sega Talk, a podcast talking all things with your hosts, George and Barry. Look, it's a giant talking egg. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the master here. So what? Hello and welcome to Sega Talk episode 100 and, well, no, 132. I'm your host, George. And with me, like always, is Barry. What's up, bro? Radical. Uh, you had to pick a color, all right? So your turtle. What's your turtle of choice before we start? I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be orange, like Michelangelo. <laughs> all right. I guess I'll get. Uh, <laughs> I guess I'll get. Um, Raphael's pretty cool. I like him. Yeah. Yeah. He is. He's cool. Second. Yeah. I mean, uh, Michelangelo is the last. Never mind. I guess we can't talk about that. That would be, yeah, that's a secret. But anyway, spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! Um, so you want to plug our Patreon? I would like to plug it, George. So we're on a website called Patreon.com/segabits. It's actually a site uh, a lot of people use. It's not just ours. But if you go to the slash segabits version, you get to support this podcast, and you also get to pick what we talk about. So. At a certain tier, you could get like audio only a week in advance, or video only a week or two in advance. But uh, this episode was actually a pick from Nicholas Schaefer, and I am, oh, he 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 breaks my heart. Um, but it's also kind of our fault. He did not get his memories in, um, but we did only give a few days lead time. Uh, but you know what we're gonna do for good old Saint Nick. Because I think he's Santa Claus, so I think he probably is just resting after delivering presents. But what we're going to do for him is if he can get that to us, uh, like text-wise, we'll just put it in the article uh, once we post this live and we'll put it on the YouTube, you know, like a, a text version in the comments or in the description. So it'll be forever there. Uh, but yeah, that's that's kind of how Patreon works and, you know, it, it keeps us going. Right, I guess, I guess it does because yeah, you know, like, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, I don't know. Um, like, we always say that, and then we're like, guys, it dip below seventy, we're done. You right, know, but right. I don't know. So let's talk about this game a little bit. Let's do it. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles: The Hyperstone Heist, or released in Europe as Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles: The Hyperstone Heist, or in Japan as Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Return of the Shredder mm. is a 1992 side-scroller beat-em-up uh, game developed and published by Konami for the Sega Genesis based on the TMNT comic book characters. And it was uh, Konami's debut title for the Sega Genesis. Yes. Uh, so first, what's your history with the TMNT franchise? Oh, yes. I have a very strong history with it. It... Uh predates my Sonic the Hedgehog fandom. In fact, I think uh, Ghostbusters, Ninja Turtles, and Star Wars predate Sonic by a good couple of years for me. And so, you know, it, I was really into the cartoon, uh, the, the 80s cartoon, the Fred Wolf produced ones. Uh, I was really into the action figures. In fact, I, uh, maybe like five, ten years ago, received my action figures back. And I was like, oh, I'm actually very close to having, like, a complete collection from the first, you know, like, four or five years. So I just hit eBay, hit local shops, and I kind of complete, <laughs> completed that, like, first five or six years of the, the action figure line. And now I'm kind of, like, good. <laughs> you know, I'm, like, good with it. I don't really buy much Ninja Turtle stuff anymore. Mm. Um, but it's just, it's kind of, you know, like, to me, it's almost like a comic book, you know? Like, I just kind of, like... I have the original run up to when I kind of like fell out of love with them and you know, I'm good. Uh, but I think after the Sonic sort of fandom 
started up with me. I was really all in with that, the comic books, the cartoons, of, of course, the video games. And so it was a huge deal for me when I was like, oh, wait, I have a video game machine. Are there any Ninja Turtle games? And it's unfortunate that this is like the only real good one on the Genesis. I know there's right. uh, that Tournament Fighters, but yeah. I rented it. I didn't like it. But this one, I I own. Um, I've talked about this a lot on the show. Like this was one of my original maybe four or five games I owned. Sonic, Sonic 2, Hyperstone Heist, Ghostbusters, Dick Tracy. But here is my beautiful, pristine copy. These sell for yeah. a lot now. Um, uh, about over 100 something dollars, right? Yeah, yeah, but I've got the poster. Oh, in nice. It. Uh, the poster has, um, what is it, Sunset Riders and Tiny Toons. And then when you open it up, it's like uh, like a, a picture of them all. It has the instruction manual. It has a mail away form for Capcom. So it's, uh, you know, it's not nothing. But, yeah, so, you know, we'll get into what I really liked about this game, but it was just kind of a big deal to be like, oh, I can finally play as the Ninja Turtles. So, you know, fast forward a dozen or so years, and I hear people, like, comparing it to other versions, and I'm like, what are you talking about? This game's awesome. So I don't really buy into that whole, like, like versus, like, who who did it better, Nintendo or uh, uh, Sega? I think they're all kind of good in their own way. I'm trying to open up this big-ass poster. Here it is. Let me show it off for the video people. What a weird group of characters, right? Right. It's Montana (laughs) Max, uh, Raphael, and a Sunset Rider. Like, three angry guys. And it says, we're coming at you head on. It's a weird way to promote uh, Sunset Riders. It's like the only non-iconic character in the uh, picture. Right. Exactly. It's like, uh, and it's what's weird too is it's promoting Hyperstone Heist, but I don't really feel like that depiction of Raph, I don't know, that's not the one you see. Maybe it is. It just it looks so bi- weird that big. Maybe that's him oh, yeah. on the box, but <coughs> yeah, oh, it's yeah. it's a little odd. Anyway, that's I, me. I, um my history with it was basically, you know, kid turtle mania um Mm -hmm. everyone was into it in some sort of a capacity there was the cartoon the video games of course i do remember like my history like my history with the tmnt games was probably more i don't know bigger to me than it was the uh the i mean i watched the cartoon the tv show and i obviously loved the movies there's like a bunch of home videos of me literally dancing to uh, ninja power by vanilla (laughs) eyes so um, definitely like the TMNT movies, even the goofy stuff, uh, especially the goofy stuff as a kid. And, yeah. um, I really like the video games, some of them. I mean, the NES one really sucked, the first one, even though it looks so cool. Have you seen that one? Yeah, yeah, I've, it, that's the one They're all, that... like, sick in the cover, they have, like, all the red bandanas, and they, and they have yeah. the white eyes. Yeah, but the game itself so, is just kind of, as the kids like, say, mid- yeah. Yeah, and I think when people say that Hyperstone Heist is like, oh, it's worse than this game or this other game, and maybe it is, but like you got to understand, like as the whole Ninja Turtle video game franchise in this era, this is probably one of the better games, even though it's mm-hmm. short. So yeah. I-, I would say, like compared to the NES and some of the Game Boy ones, so for sure. Um, so what's your history with TMNT Hyperstone Heist? You kind of did talk about how you have a mint. <laughs> copy of the game <clears throat> yeah so my history with this like i said it was one of the earliest games i picked up um i played it a ton on my sega nomad it was a game i would like just like with sonic 2 it's a short enough game that you can sit down and play through it um in one sitting i think hyperstone heist especially is very short compared to sonic 2 mm. um it was great too because the nomad has that video out and it has that second controller port so I remember playing this with friends and cousins, like when we would go on trips to the cabin, be like, anyone want to play Hyperstone Heist all the way through? And we'd be like, I'd I'd hold hold it, you know, and then they'd connect to it and sit next to me and we'd watch the same screen. Or uh, if we were able to, we'd hook it up to the TV. And uh, the the way that kind of worked is you were like daisy chained. So like they were plugged into you and then you were plugged into the TV. But if I remember right, you can see both on the TV and on the Nomad screen. So it was kind of nice. They could, like, 
look at the screen up there and I could still play like I was alone playing like with a, a co-op. Um, but yeah, I just, I really love this game. I love the music. I think the Genesis sound chip just is better in every sense than the SNES, even though I know people are like, oh, but violins. Um, but I, I just think some of the tracks on here just really kick. And I'm really looking forward to the uh, Limited Run Games vinyl release that's impend. I'm, I guess it's going to come in the next few months because they've been slowly releasing them. And I haven't gotten any of them, but I will get this one for sure. So I heard that the music on this game is just like sped up Super Nintendo music sometimes. Or like a different tempoed. It it I mean it does take tracks from the SNES one and play them faster, but I think that just works. It's like you know you listen to a remix for so long of something and you're like, oh, this kicks ass. Um, case in point, Samba de Amigo. I'm so into the the original games with like uh, uh, I get knocked down, but I get up again. You know, like the really mm-hmm. fast one, and then I played the new Samba de Amigo, which has that song again, but it's the original version. And it's like, I get knocked down, but I get up again. And you're like, oh my God, this is so slow. Like, where's yeah. the energy? And like with this one, like the, like Pizza Power and all those things, like they just, they have, they're a lot more driving. It's just, it, it just has a lot more energy to it. And, uh, and I just love the Genesis sound, like I said. So what, what's your history with this game? Actually, it's crazy that like I played so many TMNT games, and this is like back in the '90s, so you couldn't just go on the Google and go TMNT games, please, and then you get a whole list of every single one for right. every console. So the reason I played uh, Turtles in Time a lot growing up is because a cousin had it. That's it. Like he had, he just owned it. Like if not, I probably would never would have played it because I maybe I would have because I I think I they did have it in the rental spot where I lived, but his the Sega Genesis collect. Uh, selection there was always bad so i've right. literally never seen this game in the wild when i was growing up like so i would never oh, wow. would have played it so like i played it like uh on a rom later on when i found out there was a tmnt game exclusive hmm. on G- uh, genesis and i really liked it because it felt like a uh, it's a remix game it's really what it is um and i kind of liked it because it kind of reminded me of uh when you find that weird fighting game that you see a bunch of assets and you're like, oh, I remember where this is from. So it, it gave me that same thing as uh, Turtle in Time, but more of it kind of feeling right. that you just found something new. So that was good. I liked it. Right. Uh, you want to see, you want to look at, the, talk about the covers and names for each? Yeah, one? let's do that. For some reason, your camera's not on here. Oh. Well, the first one is the Hyperstone Heist. Um, it's the cover and the back cover. Yeah. Um, what do you think? This is the American one. I think this is my favorite because the uh, artwork is really dark. Uh, I like the way that the turtles look down on the... Uh, they're like looking down at the little city in Dimension X. Yeah, or yeah. It's it's funny because they shrink the city, but they're in the city in the picture. Right, so it doesn't really make any sense. How does that make you feel? What do you think about that? It's kind of weird. And, you know, the, the Twin Towers are there really tiny. Um, right. Just, what happened yeah, to that? You know, oh, I don't, you see it there. But right. <laughs> um, but I, it's always interesting with the Genesis games because they were never consistent with the uh, box art design. Obviously, like Sega first-party titles, they went from, I, I think they went from, like, black gr- black and gray grid to black and gray checkerboard to red candy stripe and when it hit red candy stripe like everyone was really on board for the most part but this is kind of those early 1991 to sort of days where places like konami there were no real restrictions or limits to how they lay it out as long as it has the sega genesis logo the seal of quality they're good um and in this case it works i love that the the cover art is like full bleed it mm-hmm. looks really nice um it's probably like the most art you can get on a genesis cover in the west usually it's in a little frame or it's uh, pushed off to the side so i i really dig it i'm what interested you, to see how the other regions do it though what do you think about the uh logo there's like so much logo here it's like konami in big old letters and it's like tmnt the big old logo then the hyper stone heist yeah i feel the hyper stone heist could be better it's not a very 
iconic logo. As much as I love the game, like I, if you were to like put a gun to my head and be like, draw the Hyperstone Heist logo, I'd be like, I don't know what it looks like. Like looking at it now, I completely forgot. There's like a maraschino cherry exploding in the middle. Like what is <laughs> right. that? Right. And it's I guess the Hyperstone itself, but I'm trying to remember if it was like a red orb. I don't even remember what it looked like. I don't remember what it looks like either. And I don't think I don't think the hyperstone's ever been brought up in other media. Dimension X obviously has, but I don't think like the hyperstone from this video game's ever been brought up. Right. And I think what I like about this too is like they stole the city. They didn't like kidnap April. Mm -hmm. Um and I also like that even though there you do go to like ancient Japan, they don't really play it up that you're time traveling. A lot of it's I think it's all in the present, but they just, because they use assets from uh, other games, out of nowhere, you'll just, like, go to Japan, but it's, like, feudal Japan, kind right. of. The way I always saw it is they were in Japan, but they were just, like, at an old castle in the modern that's what, day. That's how I would see it, too. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, overall, though, as far as this cover art, it does a great job showing you all the different levels, beautiful artwork. Like, this, if I saw this on the shelf, which I did, I'd pick this up. And, you know, I. this is probably one of the most solid Genesis games, in my opinion. I love this game. So let's look at the next game. Uh, this is the, well, this is the next cover. This is the European cover. Oh. It has the same type of logo. Uh, obviously, they changed the hero uh, title. But the, the artwork is this really bad Photoshopped. It sucks. Photoshopped uh, TMNT cartoon. Reuse oh, that's... asset art. Yeah, George, that's the shit they would give to, like, licensees to make, like, trapper keepers and, like, erasers. I used to have a blanket with this yeah, on it. I, Yeah, I had some shit with that on it. Yeah, it's, like, the most popular design for TMNT uh, back in the 90s. It looks so saying. bad. And here's the thing. Like, when Konami made this game, they obviously used the cartoon as the basis. But I think they brought their own, like, Japanese edge to it. Uh-huh. And it almost made it feel comic booky. In fact, there's, I believe, two different color modes in the game. And they're not crazy different, but one's more tune and one's more, I think, comic booky. Uh, and yeah, it's this one's just straight up saying, like, oh, hey guys, this is uh, based on the cartoon where uh, the Easter Bunny exists. And what really sucks is that the one good part of the art is the background, and it's being all covered up. Like, you can't see the city, you can't see the Statue of Liberty. And also, why is, like, why is it the city, the Statue of Liberty, and then just, like, mountain range? I don't remember a mountain range level. Yeah, and I also hate the fact that, like, uh, it came out in 93 in Europe, right? Yeah. And somehow they, like, were, they looked at the US art and they're like, no, we got this. We got this cool asset art from the cartoon. People would think this is tied to the cartoon. And so right. they like did made this disgusting mess. Let's look at the Japanese art, which has a totally different name. Um, this one's called Return of the Shredder, which I think is a more epic name if you just know the bare basics about the uh, TMT franchise. Uh, this is pretty cool cover art. I still think the American one is cooler, but the Japanese one's still pretty cool. Let's see. Okay, that's pretty epic. Right. Um, There's some I'm stuff to I hate, see, like the black yeah, I'm on trying top. To, I'm trying to see if it, like, is pulled from anything different. But no, that's definitely, like, for Hyperstone Heist, because it's Tatsu's there. He's one of the play, or one of the, the bosses. Um, Shredder looks cool. I wish there was more context to it, like the tiny New York played into it. Um, right. But overall, not bad. Uh, Return of the Shredder, I think. I don't know about that name because they never were on any Genesis game or Mega Drive to begin with. So it's like, oh, he's back, but like, from where? Right. Um, <laughs> right. And I also think that it's, I think that's like a whole like motif for these games, right? They're like, Shredder's back all the time. Um, I will say that um, it's. <clears throat> I like the idea of Return of the Shredder, but I also like in context, in long form, that Hyperstone Hype is probably one of the first or one of the other TMNT games that doesn't really... I guess most of these games in this era with Konami didn't really use um, Shredder like this, right? Like, 
even TMNT, uh, the Turtles in Time didn't have Shredder. It was just like the concept of going in time. Right. I and I think that's what I really like about this game, even though it's lacking some like notable characters in it. Like I don't think Krang is in it. Yeah, I think uh, he, is, is, he is. He is. I think he is in it. Uh, I'm trying to remember if his android body, if you fight him, I don't think you do. I mean, I've played this so much, I, sh- I should know. Um, but yeah, so it's it's lacking some elements, but it also you know makes up for it with other characters that are really cool to fight. That I think are I think Tatsu is unique to this one. I could be wrong. I I you know I didn't yeah, do the no, show no. notes. You did. So T- Tatsu is is he's one of the original uh, bad guys, I guess. Um, well, he's the uh, he's the original bad guys for the Genesis version. Right, so, right. And yeah. Tatsu himself, he he's he's from other incarnations, but I think most people know him from the movie. But he was obviously in uh, uh, the comics. I think they he made was, yeah. But I I feel like he might have been adapted from the movie for the comics. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how Tatsu is, but he's a, it's definitely an interesting character. In the he's the one that runs all the little kid game things in the first movie. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Uh, it's like our oh, father <laughs> gone. Yeah, he's like the mom of uh, right. He's like Shredder's mom or Shredder's wife, I should say. Yeah. So um, one of the most disappointing things about looking about this game online is the lack of discussion over the development of the Hyperstone Heist. And mm-hmm. it's obvious if you've uh, ever played the game, uh, troubled development cycle. What we do know is that the game was headed by uh, a makeshift young team of in-house uh, of in-house employees in Konami, led by Hiromi Sumida, uh, who is the visual designer for TMNT Three Manhattan Project. So, like mm-hmm. the visual, de- you could tell the that this game is very well visually designed. Uh, and so and so is uh, TMNT 3, Manhattan Project. I also like the art for that game, and it actually reminds me a lot of this game and the idea behind it. I think it's that they kidnap Manhattan, or they blow it up, or they put it up in the sky or something. So it's kind of the same idea. Um, this game uh, was, from the very start, supposed to be a remix game. Meaning it would take objects and assets from other team and T games and retool them. Uh, did you notice when playing the Hyperstone Heist that the game kind of felt remixy, or you've seen this before, or this story's been done before? I I didn't because I had nothing else to compare it to. But li- a little later on, I would start to play like other Ninja Turtle games at friends' houses, and yeah, I, I would notice comparisons. I remember. The first time I saw the one where you throw them at the screen, and I was like, "Oh, mine doesn't have that." Right. Um, which, I mean, I don't think we're going to get into it, so I'll just say now, like, I think it's a stupid gimmick, and it gets boring fast. Uh, um, but it's only used uh, sparingly. It's almost like one of those assets. It's almost like it's showing off graphics that the the yeah, Super Nintendo I, could do. Maybe I just was playing with someone who knew how to do it real well because I felt like I was seeing it all the time, and I'm like, "Oh, this is cool. I'll get it." Stop throwing stuff at me. Um, oh, yeah. I, I forget I, you, you could do it outside of levels. I meant like when you actually need to do it, it's only a couple times, I think. Right, right. Yeah. And I, I will add, too, um, as far as the development, that the only really thing I can find from the box here is that Konami was like near where I am physically in Illinois. It was at 900 Deerfield Parkway in Buffalo Grove, Illinois, uh, 60089. Uh, and looking at that address now, it's a company called Crosscom, which is a comprehensive end-user services and solutions for geographically dispersed enterprises on the retail, automotive, grocery. So it's definitely not a video game company anymore. Right. But uh, yeah. it, if you visit their 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 um, page, they actually have pictures of their like lobby um, and some of their workplaces. So. If you squint real hard, you can imagine like Konami in the '90s in America. So, there's that. <clears throat> so, um, I kind of noticed. That, I mean, that it was obviously remixed when I first played it because I played uh, so much of the uh, Turtles in Time. Uh, I also played the arcade version of it, so I was like, 
the same way I felt like, oh man, they reused these assets so many times by the time I got to uh, Hyperstone Heist. Um, like I said, I didn't care. It felt like I was playing more of the same, which I kind of liked at the time, and I, I don't hate it. Um, mm-hmm. Is there any remix games that you really, really like that wouldn't have existed if they did an asset flip? Um, well, I mean, the big one's Sonic Mania. Right. Uh, I, I feel like there's been a lot of discourse lately where people are like, people wouldn't like this game unless it like utilized assets that people love. And I kind of agree with that. Like, you know, like there's something really cool playing it and being like, oh, I know Chemical Plant. Oh, look at all these cool new things they did with it. And mm-hmm. that's like the epitome of a remix game. And this one, it's more like they're being a... Uh, uh, you know, sneaky with the assets from something else and making a new game. And I, I think they hit it out of the park. I, I personally, I didn't notice until years later. And what they did do, I think is, is a, you know, a very fun game. I love the gauntlet, uh, which we'll get to, but like, where you, pl- will you play through all the, the, like the boss rush? I think that's really cool. There's a, there's an interesting hack about that. And I, I was going to talk to you about it in the end. So good that you yeah. uh, brought it up. Um, I, There's so many games now. I think the idea of reusing assets is now so commonplace that, like, I don't think this is a big deal like it used to be back in the day. I think some people did kind of give companies crap for, like, reusing assets and, like, let's say, oh, if you played Final Fantasy this one, you expected the game to be almost made from scratch for the next one, right? right? Like, that type of development. But Capcom and Konami were kings of, like, reusing assets with Marvel versus Capcom. That would never would have happened without all the reused assets. Um, even Yakuza, yeah. the modern Yakuza games, reuse almost literally everything. Like when you see trailers for the new game and you see NPCs yeah. that were just created this last time, like this last year, they look all yeah. detailed. And then there'll be like random women that are from the PS3 era that they're still reusing the assets of. <laughs> and then you're like, what's going on here? But yeah, I, I, yeah. I'm okay with reusing assets. As long as the game is fun. Right, right. It, it lets them experiment with new ideas and not make it cost so much and make you have to sell 10 million copies. So I'm okay with that. Right. That's why I get kind of surprised when studios like Disney or Pixar, they'll like change an art style. And I'm like, oh, you, you could have just like stuck to the same Pixar art style for all the humans. And then like in Toy Story 4, use Ratatouille humans. But they don't, you know, like it. Like, in Ratatouille, the people look different from the people in... Uh, uh, Luca. Uh, Luca, or or Turning Red, and it's kind right. of like... I don't know if that's like a flex on their part, or if it's just an artistic decision. Probably an artistic decision from the director. Um, but, I, you know, oh, that's yeah. admirable. Um, but imagine if, like, Yakuza changed their art style. They'd be fucked. <laughs> Right, or you know? like they just had to like remake. They don't never remake the city. Like they always make it once, yeah. use it for five, ten years. I mean, five, seven years, make seven games out of it, maybe even more now. And yeah. then new engine guys. Um, so let's talk about the plot, which is I think very generic uh, Tim and T plot. April yeah. O'Neil is reporting from Liberty Liberty Island. Is that a real Liberty. island? Liberty, Liberty Island. Yeah, that's where the Liberty. Statue of Liberty is. Oh, okay. So it gets its own island. That's cool. Um, in the f- and in a flash of light, she and her audience witness Manhattan Island suddenly start to shrink. Shredder hijacks the airwaves and announces to the world that this is a demonstration of the power of the Hyperstone, the treasure of Dimension X. Uh, with the Hyperstone in his possession, he has the power to take over the world. The turtles have no choice but to stop Shredder. So, um, this whole TV and jacking airwaves and the uh, Statue of Liberty, same right. setup as uh, TMNT uh, in time, only that this time it's the uh, Hyperstone and Dimension X, and in Turtles in Time, it was him going back in time or something. I forgot what it was. Or he takes the Statue of Liberty, I think, or something. In the uh, yeah, yeah, he does something a little different. Right. And it, it's interesting because the uh, the hyperstone it doesn't really come from anything, but there are similarities. Uh, there is something called the Eye of Sarnath, which is from the cartoon, uh, the eighties cartoon, but it also made its way into the Archie Adventure series 
which was basically a comic edit. Like it's like the uh, Archie Sonic equivalent to like Sad AM. Like it's its own thing, but it it spun off from the cartoons, and it's just like this extra uh, terrestrial jewel. And in the cartoon, Shredder actually puts it on his helmet, which I think would have been cool here, because then it would show the Hyperstone. Um, instead, we just kind of see him, um, oddly, like, super ripped. Oh, you know what? It is on his helmet. I'm such an idiot. It is there. Um, that's where the Hyperstone is. It's on his helmet, but it's a little tiny purple gem that's definitely not a round red, like, cherry that they but, have on the cover. But the sprite in the... Um... In the um, Super Nintendo version, I think still has the um, little um, diamond thing on there. So maybe I don't know. It's weird. Have you yeah, played a lot of the Super Nintendo one? <clears throat> I've played a bit of it because of the collection that came out. But right. um, I, I have to imagine that is the Hyperstone, and it's interesting because he's painted uh, like his action figure. Um, he's got like the the green, the purple little like his arms are completely shown which they aren't uh so much in the in the uh cartoon i mean he does have his arms out but i don't know it just it looks very i think what it is is his chest is showing like his neck and everything which is kind of weird to me you don't like uh, that uh you can see his ripply muscles of his neck those are too many n- muscles like when people have that many muscles they start to look like crustaceans it's weird kind of makes me want to vomit what are you talking about? Look how many like, his his ribs have abs on them. It's disgusting. And his like uh, his um, muscles are just like ridiculously jacked, and his eyes are your, so screwed up. How does your t shirt like dip inside of the muscles? That's I don't know. Weird. What do you think about I don't his? Like it. I don't know. He looks weird. Look at his eyes. He's like looking sideways, and he's doing the Sonic thumb. Yeah, he is. He's doing the Sonic. <laughs> he wants to be Sonic so bad, bro. It's so Oh, sad. I want to do an edit where you put oh. him inside the Sonic logo. He's That'd so be great. He's so lame. He wants to be Sonic so bad, but he'll never be Sonic. So it's pretty. He pathetic. does have the treasured Hyperstone, though. So yeah, it's pretty sick. No, I'm not gonna lie. It's pretty cool being able to destroy Manhattan. So going going back to the Eye of Sarnath. Yeah, if that's definitely the Hyperstone, then he did in the cartoon put an alien gem there on his helmet, and it gave him powers. I don't know what powers it gave him, but it, it gave him something. Muscle powers? Uh, let's see. They found it. Oh, no, what? You know what? Here. The Eye of Sarnath uh, was in the episode The Incredible Shrinking Turtles. Um, before dying, the extraterrestrial gives tells them of its terrible power. Uh, let's see. The fragment has the ability to shrink down objects as well as reverse the projects. Yeah, so the the Eye of Sarnath is basically the cartoon version of the Hyperstone. But I think Hyperstone sounds cooler than yeah. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and the Eye of Sarnath. <laughs> but if you had to hear the the word Hyperstone, would you think uh, it shrinks you? Or what would your first thoughts on the name Hyperstone? You know, I, I, I can't say. Go fast? A stone that makes you go fast? It sounds like it makes them go fast, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was kind of epic in the cartoon because it was a multi-episode arc because they each Hyperstone fragment did something different and then you united them all, it made him like super. So it was like the the super uh, sonic uh, gems, you know, it was like the Chaos Emeralds. Right, and um, yeah. so let's talk a little bit about um, the gameplay for this game. Um, the gameplay, I guess I would... I guess would, it's exactly kind of like the TMNT arcade game, the mm-hmm. Turtles in Time, which is obviously ported to the Super Nintendo, which is obviously reusing assets in this game, um, especially this first level I'm showing, the sewer is from the game, uh, Super Nintendo one. Um, but there's some improvements in the Genesis version. Uh, I think one of the biggest ones is that you have a dedicated run button, and you, yeah, yeah. on the Super Nintendo you have to double tap, which is, could be annoying. Uh, so it's just a lot easier to be able to play like an arcade and have two fingers. Um, mm-hmm. And there's some like really interesting things that they added that they didn't have to add into the game. Like the when you run and you do a lot of jumps, you do kind of like acrobatic moves, which they didn't have to add. There's super moves that take your health away but do massive damage. Uh, there's powers up, power ups. There's only two power ups, and it's like health with pizza and then that one thing that makes you spin around in circles 
right. which is kind of like a like a star uh, item. Um, outside of that, I think that's pretty much the whole gameplay, right? Mm-hmm. Very you basic, like a, but... Right. You have, like, a run attack button, a yeah, jump button attack. Yeah, but, you know, it also all depends on, like, the arc of your jump. So if you go up and then come down, you can do a different attack right before you hit the ground than mm -hmm. if you jump up and then do it immediately in the air and you shoot down. So there's one where you, like, go, like, ha, and then you kind of, like, float up, and then there's another one where you're in the air and then you shoot down. So... Uh, and then between running and you can like elbow or cross check people like in hockey, um, right. there's a lot of variation you can do, and I think that's, you know, that that carries over to all of the Ninja Turtle fighting games, and I think that's why something like uh, Shredder's Revenge was such a big hit, was because it scratched that itch for a lot of people who were like, you know, Ninja Turtles is unique as a uh, uh, what what are they called them? Uh, not a fighter, but a um, Beat em up. Beat em up. Yeah, beat em up just because you've got four characters, different weapons, and I, I think there's a lot of really cool moves that have since become synonymous with the franchise itself. It's not... I think what's unique about these Ninja Turtle games is they are defining the genre. The genre doesn't define them. Right. Um, of course, games like Streets of Rage came out, but I feel like this also came out. It's not like this was a... Oh, let's copy Streets of Rage. It was more like, well, let's put our spin on this French on this genre, and define the genre. And right. like, Ninja Turtles does things better than Streets of Rage sometimes. Yeah, I mean, like uh, <laughs> one of the I think defining features for the TMNT game is the uh, interaction with the levels, like hitting mm -hmm. the fire hydrants, falling into the sewers, little things yeah. you find out. I think that's something that Streets of Rage really didn't focus on when they made their gameplay design. Right, and I yeah. I think. Ninja Turtles is unique, and it's one of the very few uh, non-video game franchises that really carved out its own place in video games and came to define a genre. I'm trying to think of other franchises. Maybe Star Wars did that. Uh, there's so many um, RPGs and like lightsaber-focused and like ship-based games. So maybe Star Wars and Ninja Turtles are the only ones that really come to mind. Like everything else, it's like. You know, oh, it's a platformer with Aladdin, but like Aladdin's not redefining platforming. It's almost like they're using what was learned in Earthworm Jim and like other titles and refining it. Um, and they didn't continue on. It's not like we have 15 Aladdin games that we talk about, but here we are, you know, decades later, and there's a compilation and there's there's uh, new games for the franchise that right. uh, continue. So yeah. Let's talk a little bit about the levels in this game. Um, Let's do it. So I, we have a list here on Sega Retro with pictures of each level. As you can tell, mm -hmm. there's not too many levels to go through in this game. Um, I wouldn't say it's the shortest game in the world. It's about an hour. But back in the day, if you paid 80 bucks for a game, pretty sure your mom would not be happy that you spent an hour to beat uh, the game. And now you need another game. Um, right. So the first level we're, uh, we're seeing here is uh, New York city with leatherhead being the boss uh, the boss fight here um mm -hmm. i will say um i this level is obviously also in uh the super nintendo game but one of the things that uh, i like about this is the city version of it because of the fire hydrants and you could hit the uh the sewer lids and if you time it correctly so this is a cool level uh what is your what's your opinion on new york city being oh yeah the opening I mean, iconic. It's got great music. I like that you go above and below and above. Uh, I like that the pizza monsters kind of pop out. There's a lot of, like, one-hit kill enemies that will just, like, storm the stage. Uh, mousers. And uh, these, like... like I, I think they're, like, Technodrome security robots. They're, mm -hmm. like, on little wheels. And and then these, uh, these pizza monsters. <laughs> I right. forgot what they're called, but they're from that episode that's like a ripoff of, like, Gremlins. Um, but they look like they're from Aliens. And then there's Leatherhead at the end, and I think he's a, a great boss. I love his little, like, ang -ang 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 snapping attack. Um, yeah, and it makes sense so being in, in New York sewers to be an alligator. It's a, yeah, it's a solid first level, but after that opening cutscene, it doesn't really tie into it. You know, the, are you shrunk? No. Like, a portion mm -hmm. of the city, I guess, is shrunk. Maybe. Or, or... 
is just like what shrunk? I don't it know. Says, it said Manhattan shrunk. Yeah, but you're in Manhattan, so are you shrunk, right. or are you in a different area going to where? Like, it doesn't really show like a big pit. Uh, no. They don't get that literal. So, and really, there's no going through the stage. There's nothing making you feel like I'm going to unshrink it. You're just kind of like I'm going to fight everybody, and then oh, there's Leatherhead. And Leatherhead doesn't really work for Shredder. He's kind of like a guy who can get manipulated by the bad guys, but he's mm. he's kind of in the gray area sometimes. Um, he's a cool action figure, though, and I think in the latest Ninja Turtles, like they had an attractive actress play him, and it's like a woman now, which is interesting. I think in the comics, he, he, he has a daughter, doesn't he? He might, yeah. Uh, yeah, in the last Ronin, I think he has a daughter. That he's, takes a, over. he's a tiny action figure, though, but he's a huge boss in this. And that always threw me off, because if you see his action figure, he's like three quarters the size of a Ninja Turtle, because he's like bent over. He's very tiny. Um, so the next level we have is the Mysterious Ghost Ship. Um, yes. This one's pretty cool, because it starts off as a surfing level, which is always cool, obviously, uh, when you surf. Like, even Shinobi 3, when you have the horse, so cool. Um, mm mm-hmm. You get to go on a ship, which is cool. I like pirate-themed uh, levels. And then you go into a cave for some reason. Then yeah. you fight Rocksteady, but Bebop is stayed home for this fight, <laughs> for yeah. this appearance. Um, so what do you think about the uh, Mysterious Ghost Ship? Uh, this is a fantastic stage. I think this is some of the best music. The surfing music is just like iconic. That's one of the reasons I want to get the vinyl for this. Mm. Um, I like that you then enter the ship. And then you exit the ship and you land and you go through this tunnel, which obviously leads into the next one. Um, but yeah, it is kind of an odd progression from New York to surfing to a ghost ship. And looking back, I definitely can see the lifted assets because, again, you haven't traveled through time, but you're on like an old ship. Right. Like, what is this? But they call it, oh, it's just the mysterious ghost ship. And then rock studies there in the end. But that's kind of alluding to the fact that you're getting close because they're henchmen for Shredder. Mm-hmm. So, like, Rocksteady's there to stop you. But, yeah, it always did bother me that Bebop was not uh, in the game. Yeah, me too. I, I, they're buddies. It's like Sonic and Tails. you got to have them together. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> so the next level we have is Shredder's Hideout. Uh, I'm not that big of a fan of this uh, level design. I feel like it's a little lazy. Uh, yeah. It looked like it was like scrapped together last minute. Um, this boss fight has two TMNT... Uh, wait, what is this? Oh, Tatsu. This is the mm-hmm. only video game appearance from Tatsu. And yeah. he's the... Uh, he kind of... I mean, he looks weird here. He's so much, mu- like, so much more muscular here than he is in the movie. Right. Yeah, in the movie, he looks like he's just like a random, cool, like, Asian dude that just got off the couch. Right. Yeah, this stage is all right. Like, like I said, like, uh, progression-wise, you're like, oh, I guess we're in Japan now. Oh, we're entering, like, a dojo. But mm-hmm. then once you get to Tatsu, I think that's a really great boss fight. I love how he comes out, but he just stands still and instructs the other fighters. He's like, you know, like, uh, what is it, Mr. X from uh, Streets of Rage? Like, he's... You, you really feel like, oh, by stage three, I'm already getting pretty close because this guy's like, he's up there. We're not even getting uh, Bebop. Um, I love the statue of Shredder in the background. And, <laughs> With the uh, Buddha hands? Yeah, yeah. It is. yeah. Just like, overall, it's an okay stage, kind of an epic ending. So, yeah, I, I enjoyed this one. Okay. Uh, so you're a fan. All right. Um, and the next one, <laughs> this is the most controversial uh, stage yeah. of the whole thing. It's called The Gauntlet. This stage contains a boss rush against three previous bosses and a boss fight against the human Baxter Stockman. Yeah. <laughs> I love that it's like, no, no, not the, not the uh, fly Stockman. No, no. Human Stockman. And he's uh, the white, I think, because he's like been like uh, changed, right? Like, I know Stockman as the uh, newer version of Stockman. That it's been in right, the head, yeah, for so yeah. Long. He he was like a crazy haired white guy, I guess. In this, yeah. um, I I don't mind the stage. Like I, I thought it was kind of epic to like go through all the bosses. And again, I played this a lot of times with other people, and so we weren't like, oh man, they're reusing assets. We were like, oh shit, we got to fight four bosses in a row. This is kind of epic. Um, and they're like different colors, which is kind of weird, but you know, I, I can handle it. 
uh, and I just I think it's a cool end because even though you you don't get Baxter as a fly, it does you know kind of harken back to the early days of the cartoon when he wasn't a fly; he was just making mm. mousers, and I think his whole thing was like he was making mousers to go after Splinter. Uh, so yeah, there's whole, that whole thing. Um, but yeah, it, it's cool to have a flying boss. It's not Krang, but at least it's like a flying boss, you know. And then we have the last level, the Technodrome, aka the final shell shock, aka mm-hmm. space level that seems to like randomly happen in these games where you're like in a pirate ship surfing in the sewers and then you're in space or something randomly. Um, this one's weird. It has like human skeletons in the back, like they're doing uh, experiments in the, <laughs> yeah. in the last stage. Uh, obviously, you have the ass. This is the same <clears throat> model, obviously, as the Super Nintendo game um, of uh, Krang, and so is uh, Super Shredder. Actually, Super Shredder looks more like the movie than he does in the <clears throat> Super Nintendo game, right? Yeah, just a bit. Yeah, and I, I'm kind of showing my my. Weakness, because I said, like, I don't think Krang's android body is in this game. It definitely is, but it kind of shows how... I did play this game a lot, but I didn't always get this far. Mm, Um, I did complete the game. Yeah, but the gauntlet would sometimes take it out of me. Uh, It wasn't until I'd used Game Genie that I would then get to this kind of area. But I think, too, what's missing is that there's no build-up. Like, it's not like Krang is you're fighting Krang himself mm. and then he goes inside the body. Like I, I think it could have used that, but it's still cool to go in the elevator and then get super shredder there in the end. But yeah, it, it definitely does not play with shrinking at all throughout the game. Um, it's just the cutscenes that kind of show the city being saved, which is kind of weird. Um, so I, I will say that like, if I had to like, make this whole thing better and in order it obviously add you have to add like after the shredders hideout there had to be another uh, level here and then maybe give another level to like uh crank by himself with him being the boss in the end of the level right uh in the super nintendo version you had like a uh a sprite scaling surfing uh or city i don't know hover hoverboard game in the super nintendo right and mm-hmm. that's probably the coolest looking level because it uses all the Super Nintendo technology. They kind of needed something like that for for the Genesis right there for the Krang level, and then finally make the final shell shock where you have the boss rush mode in it, and then the boss fight for Shredder. But yeah, right. But you know, for what it is, it's it's almost like you go to a restaurant, you get a really nice meal. And then you leave and you're like, man, I wish there was like one more course. Always. But it's like, <laughs> but it's like, you know, the, they didn't, you know, so, so it's, it's kind of it. hard to, yeah, it's kind of like you, you got a good meal. Like the, if the biggest turnoff of this game is that there's a boss rush, but the bosses are still fun to fight and you do get a new boss at the end. I don't think that's a big slam on the game. Um, so uh, and just it's an experience you don't get on the SNES, like even though it's. A remix, mm-hmm. it's a remix that you can only experience here. <laughs> so that's something. Is there uh, any villain in TMNT history that you wish was uh, included oh, in this one? Yes. Uh, my favorite TMNT villain is Mutagen Man. Mutagen Man. And he's, Man. he's uh, like a little pile of guts. He's only like, like if he were next to me right now, he would only be like this big. He'd be like here. He'd be like eyeballs and like some guts and a brain. Um, and he floats around in this little like tube or this little like container with arms and legs. Uh, mm. And you could fill it with water, like the actual action figure, and like put little plastic pieces in and they'd float around. Um, they brought that character back for the 2012 cartoon series, the CG one. And can you guess who voices him? No, who? Roger Craig Smith. Oh, really? Nice. Yeah. So I was like, so when I was watching the show, I'm like, holy crap, Sonic the Hedgehog's voicing my favorite Ninja Turtle villain. And he like returned, returned like quite a bit to that character. His action figures, not as good as the old one, but still kind of cool. It like opens up and you can pour slime inside. I actually took a picture of 
Sonic Boom Sonic standing inside of it, so it's almost like Sonic Boom Sonic's controlling the like tube and body of Mutagen Man. But yeah, I I just think that would have been a really cool boss because you know he he could like have his big crazy Mutagen arms like stretch out and attack you, and then like the whole thing is like fight the little glass jar and maybe it could crack as the fight goes on. And at the end, it like bursts open. It's just like a pile of guts on the floor. I think that would be cool. Um, see, yours is way better than mine. I was just gonna say the rat. <laughs> I was gonna say the Rat King. I always thought he was creepy, and I think his acid was in the Super Nintendo one, so it would have been kind of an easy oh. addition. Yeah, and I I'd, I'd say too that there's a connection there because uh, the Mousers that were going to go after Splinter, I think, also interfered with the Rat King, and right. so it was almost like a moment where. Rat King had to work with the Ninja Turtles. I don't think they'd ever go that far in this game to be like, oh, we're going to do a side story where, like, no. there's a gray character. <laughs> no. Still. Uh, yeah. I like the Rat King. He's cool. I like... He's got, like, a little bandage around his nose. <laughs> so, so even though the game, this game, wasn't uh, as promoted as other ninja turtle media in the time mm-hmm. there was a ad which is obviously for not just this game but for the past uh tmnt games so let's can do you have it up we can watch it yeah yeah all right press play now this is Kawabungi, and this is Kawabongo. but the turtles for your 16-bit system are Kawabunga! holy cow it's turtles in time the cool arcade game for super nes now with tasty turtle duels and psych up your sega genesis with the hyper stone heist and all new 3d turtle threat so remember this is Kawabingo. but the turtles for super nes and sega genesis are Kawabunga, dude so the commercial advertises both games but all the footage is from the super nintendo version of the game they even have the super shredder from this from the super nintendo like they didn't even show one frame of sega genesis gameplay there really wow did you notice that yeah 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 oh that's wild and they also like made up a big thing about the um these two-player mode uh which is in this game if you don't have the American version, because I think it's in the European and Japanese, it's a code. And I think you can hmm. play, fight against each other. Um, I don't think it's in the American one, which is kind of lame. But yeah. yeah. So let's look at the print ad. Um, there was a li- luxurious... Uh, <clears throat> so there's a... Oh, I guess the other one didn't come up. I don't know why. There's this... Uh, uh, now I have to look for it online. Give me a sec. But, Is uh, it the big three-panel one? Yeah, the t- yeah, TMNT. That's amazing. Yeah, it is really good, but I can't. For some reason, it's not showing up on my uh, on my thing. So no, I don't know. So it's uh, got like a, a brain helmet going into the art. Is wild. It looks like ripoff Ninja Turtle art. It looks like Mad Magazine take on them. They look right. so weird. They look so plasticky and like. Let's see if I like can open weird, it up somehow. They look like weird plastic statues of the Ninja Turtles that someone took pictures of. They don't look like drawings. No, it's uh, the creepiest thing I've ever seen. Yeah, so they're like, they're basically like electrocuting Raphael's brain, and he's just like fucking losing it. it says turn on the flop, turn on the power, and it says now you can hook the turtles up to your Sega Genesis, and they're like, <laughs> uh, Leonardo is like jumping like a frog it's very weird and then michelangelo is just calmly folding his hands over the game like he's working at a video store and he's like hey bro you want to try a new game like god that's weird mm. they even illustrated a genesis with the game in it but the the label art is just the word the hyperstone i think i might wow what do you think about uh that I think I got it. Let me see. No, I guess I don't. It's so weird. It won't let me. It won't let me show it. But uh, I, I think I know why. Let me see. I think it's too cool for school. It's because it's. Uh, you know how they make all these images now, web d whatever. You know what I'm talking oh, about. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is uh, not PNG, so I have to save it real quick. But yeah, it's a cool image. 
This is probably one of the coolest advertisement pieces, but would this sell you on the game? I'll show it to you. Uh, I mean, if I was a kid, I was like, oh, cool, Ninja Turtles is on the Genesis. I'll buy that. Like, they don't have to do much to win me over. Um, well, do, you, do you know what this was in? Like, was this... Uh, it, it was on Sega Visions. Actually, I do Oh, know. then I own this. I'm, I have to find that magazine and dig it out then, because I have the whole run of Sega Vision, so... Well, I can't show that's that one, cool. even though it's really, really cool. Um, there's this other one that just says, The Turtles wouldn't trade these adventures for all the slime in Hollywood. And it's <laughs> the four games that came out during the same time period, uh, showing you how much video game content the Turtles got during Turtle Mania 92. Well, that doesn't make sense, though. It's ooze. Right. <laughs> it's slime, though. You called it slime? I know. So that's terrible. Ghostbusters. Sl- ooze is like a tool. Ooze does something to you. Slime is a byproduct. It like is something a ghost leaves behind. The last like one, maybe, yeah. What? And the last one is just the Japanese one, which isn't like it's so much. The Japanese one's kind of sucks. It's like so much writing than it is actual like turtle stuff. Uh, yeah. It looks really bad. Yeah, and so. it's it's shame because there's a really great uncropped version of the the cover art but it's so tiny right let me see that's very weird what do you think about uh so okay first let me get this okay the legacy of uh this Mm. game so let's talk a little bit about the legacy of this game so tmnt the hyperstone heist has sadly been overshadowed by the immensely popular snes turtles in time but that doesn't mean that this entry is totally forgotten, since in the 2022 TMNT Cowabunga edition included its uh, the this game with online multiplayer. Uh, have yeah. you played this? You said you have played the collect. Uh, I have. Collection. Yeah. And what do you? Uh, what's your thoughts about this? Did you ever think that they were going to do a Konami TMNT collection no. with like every game? I think it's epic. I love these collections. Disney did this too, where it has. Not only the console versions, but like the Game Boy and Game Boy mm. Color and like Game Gear ports. I I just think that's so cool because those games are like really shitty and people are like, oh, they should be forgotten. But no, like put them on a compilation. That's why, you know, like when Limited Run Games does like the Jurassic Park collection and they're like, you know, it's just like it's not everything. It's like lacking the Sega CD one. And I don't know. It just it, it this one, I think, did it right. I love that it had all of those like development materials, um, all of the games. Like I don't need to collect these games anymore, ever, because I have them in this collection. That's kind of the mentality I have now. I look over at my shelves and I have like a good amount of games, but like they're not growing outside mm. of Switch and like PlayStation Four, and I'm good with that. Like when these collections come out like that, I'm like I'm so happy because I'm like. I don't need to buy a Nintendo console to, like, experience the SNES games. Like, I don't even own an SNES. I have the Mini, and that's about it. Um, I don't own an N64. I'm waiting for, like, a collection of games from that. But I just, I like these a lot more than... I, when I hear people going, oh, yeah, oh, they added new games to Nintendo Switch Online. I'm like, I, I don't care. Like, those stuff, that stuff's going to come and go. Right. Like, why are you excited for stuff that in... Four years, Nintendo is going to take away from us. It's stupid. But collections like this are just, yeah, thumbs up. I want more of these. The, I think that and the Atari one, the Atari 50, were like peak. That's how you do it. Yeah, I hope uh, companies like Sega and Capcom kind of get a, a little thing going on. Maybe like release some of the yeah. classic Marvel stuff they used to do, like in a collection, the 2D pixel stuff in a collection would I think- be cool. I think Origins Plus was a big step in the right cl- direction. I know people have problems with it, but I love that it has every Game Gear game on it. Right. Um, and I- I'd love to see Sega do more of that, where it's like... I, what I'm, My dream is to have a Fantasy Star collection, where it's one, two, three, four, uh, and then like maybe the DS game, you know, something like that. Um, same for Golden Axe, like do one, two, three... And the Game Gear ports and the Axe Battler RPG, like, go all out. I don't know why they're not doing that. 
like I, I think they'd make a, a good amount of money if they did a Streets of Rage collection, Golden Axe collection, just like Ninja Turtles did. They used to do that in uh, Japan with the uh, Ages series, so it'd be pretty yeah. interesting to have them do it again. That was insane that they, they, for decades, were making these collections that never came out here. And when they did, they'd, like, repackage them and give us, like, the worst of the worst. Right. It was so weird. Right. And then when they finally did, they did bring it back, they kind of quickly canceled it. Like, the other day I was playing uh, my Switch. I was on vacation. And I was like, oh, I want to play Afterburner. And I was like, wait, they never did Afterburner. Right, you know, which is so weird. I should be able to play Afterburner on the Nintendo Switch, and I can't. Not even in the uh, kind of crummy Genesis Classics collection. So, life's not fair sometimes. It um, isn't. It sucks. <clears throat> well, other entries of video games from these areas. Oh, so like a lot of these games kind of got callbacks in uh, other media. Sometimes in mm-hmm. movies. Um, even TMNT Turtles in Time got a. 2009 remake uh, titled uh, oh, Turtles yeah. in Time Reshelled with new graphics and sound. Uh, I downloaded that. Right. So, Hyperstone Heist, while obviously incomplete, would you like to see an extended uh, re-release of the game, like the full vision, if they had a full vision? Mm. And does this game deserve something like that? I Personally, I'd love to see that. I can't see it happening, especially now that they've just done the re- the compilation uh, and that they've done Shredder's Revenge. But right. if Shredder's Revenge did get a sequel, I'd like to see it pull elements from Hyperstone Heist, Turtles in Time, and maybe do a big mashup, like, time travel sequel, something like that. I know they're doing DLC, and they just actually did the, like, one-year anniversary version or whatever that has all the DLC on the disc. I actually mm-hmm. uh, was on vacation, and I canceled my pre-order because I, like... One day it was like an Amazon thing was like, heads up, you've got eight games shipping to you. And I'm like, no, I don't. And I canceled all of them. I'm like, I'm not spending. I didn't realize everything was like hitting at once. And I'm like, I'm not getting like, I'm not dropping 200 bucks on games at the height of Christmas. But uh, I got to go back and pick that up. But I hope there's more. Uh, I, I think Hyperstone Heist is a cool plot that I think could be expanded in like a Shredder's Revenge 2. Or whatever. And uh, so I looked online and I was like, there has to be a modder that is going to remake the game, right? There's modders that do so crazy stuff. I was like, Mm -hmm. there has to be somebody that's taken the Super Nintendo stuff and like remixed it. Didn't look, did not find it, but I did find some some of these uh, ROM hacks that people might want to be, uh, might be interested in. The first one is called... Big Apple, 3 a.m. If you played uh, Turtles in Time, you would know that that's the opening for the game. It's literally like mm-hmm. the turtle saying, Big Apple, 3 a.m. And then you start off in uh, New York in the bridge. Um, so this one updates the, the first fight with Baxter. And it's Baxter. Yeah. And it's not the fly Baxter. It's the human Baxter from the Genesis game. So uh, it remakes the original opening level, like the Super Nintendo game. Then we got the uh, this other one called Gauntlet Hacks. Uh, this is multiple hacks for the Gauntlet stage. It removes Leatherhead, Rocksteady, and Tatsu. Removes the Gauntlet completely from gameplay. Enemies in Gauntlet use non-Gauntlet colors, both simplified and recolored. So this is just basically makes the ga- the Gauntlet level super simplified. And like you said, hmm. you don't always go get through it, so. If yeah, you just want to play the game simply without the gauntlet stuff. Uh, you probably want this hack, I guess. What do you think? You think people should suffer through the gauntlet to be able? You to be... you deserve it. You, you need to. It. It's called the gauntlet. Uh, this next on. one. This next one is. Uh, I wonder what you think about this. Uh, this one is called enhanced colors, and it makes the colors of the game look more like the uh, Super Nintendo version, more brighter, hmm. more vivid, I guess. Uh, cause I guess the Genesis one was pretty dark. Do you think so? I, I never really thought of it that way. I, looking at the comparison shots, it just looks brighter, which it's, I guess is the, the goal, but. Right. Hmm. Like. I, I, I feel like some people are much more hypersensitive of colors. I feel like, I, it's not that I have like color blindness or anything, but I just. You're a designer. 
I'm not bothered by it though. I like I I can make out the if I can make out the image, then that's fine. But like you know, it's not like uh, uh, the Game of Thrones like entire episode in the dark. Like I can see the game, right? But I so. I just thought it was interesting. It, it kind of does make like uh, Donna, uh, Michelangelo's like bandana more yellow than it is orange like if you look at mm-hmm. it's more yellow i don't know what's more color accurate i would have to see what it is but the uh orange and the genesis version is very like dark orange Interesting. like pretty yeah so it, i i think he, in the new one it's more like tails orange than it is uh, but yeah there's mm-hmm. this other uh mod called uh Hyperstone with friendly fire. So in Japan and Europe versions of Hyperstone Heist, there was a code to support two-player friendly fire, so you could hit each other. That I thought it was supposed to be the two-player thing, but no, no, it's not. Sorry. I <laughs> guess you can't hit each other in the U.S. version at all, even with a uh, code. So I guess if the U.S. version, if you want to hit each other, this is it right here. Wow. So um, another thing I noticed when looking online to close this up. Uh, there's a, a big crossover between um, hackers that like um, Streets of Rage and TMNT. There's a lot of a big crossover hacks for TMNT uh, that puts TMNT characters into Streets of Rage 2. I found two big ones uh, online that have a big support. But there's this new one that just came out called uh, that called uh, TMNT, uh, what is it, Shredder's Re-Revenge? Revenge? Re-Revenge? Re-Revenge. Yeah, which is a ROM hack that replaces the Streets of Rage heroes with TMNT, but not the TMNT stripes from the Hyperstone Heist, but TMNT uh, sprites from the modern, newly released... Re- oh, weird. Uh, yeah, Revenge of Shredder. So let's look at the trailer here real quick. I'll play it up. So we can see some of the how it runs. It's crazy that they even got this to happen. Yeah. That looks really good. Right? You can play as all of them. Including wow. now. April. Wow. That looks great. Bosses are there, which, oh wow. Bebop and Rocksteady are there. It looks just like a new Ninja Turtle game. Right. That's crazy. Like, you just talked about remixing games. Like, right. this one tricks me. Like, if I. I almost forget it's street, Streets of Rage. Right. They did a good wow. job. Wow. Yeah. So try that. Is it out yet? I think it is out. I I, I just saw this. Uh, yeah, yes, it is because you could download it off of uh, you could ch- download it off of uh, CD Romance. Um, they have the nice. easy link already all created for you. So th- I will check that out. Um, so definitely some interesting stuff we saw here. Obviously, there's not too much info on this game on the internet, so this is a short episode. Um, any closing thoughts you have on uh, the Hyperstone heist? You know, it it took a long time for us to cover this one, but I'm glad we did. I'm glad our uh, Patreon supporter, Nicholas Schaefer, picked it. Um, like I said, when he has his thoughts, we will add them to the uh, article posting there. But yeah, I just love this game. It's it's kind of like my first beat-em-up, and it's kind of the epitome of beat-em-ups for me. Um, it's just such an iconic game for me, so... Yeah, I, I love it. It's it's a fun, simple, delicious little game. <laughs> I like it. And uh, do you have any memories to read on this uh, vi- beautiful video game? Yes, sir, I do. And uh, you, So first off... I was, mm-hmm. I was going to say before, I thought you were looking for them, but uh, I also collected the video, uh, the toys, by the way, growing up of the TMNT. As a kid, my mom mm. bought them for me. It's not like I collected them. I didn't pick them. She bought all of them for me because I wanted them. Right, right. But uh, I destroyed all of mine. I didn't keep them. But my cousin, he kept all of his. So he has like a whole attic of pristine, literally never played with uh, TMNT toys from the 90s. That wow. He does nothing with. I was trying to convince him to sell it, but whatever. Yeah. 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 You know, mine used to be on display at my old house. And now they're they're in storage, but they're very easily accessible. And that's kind of my my goal in the new year is to 
put them in individual bags or groupings so mm. that I can very easily like take them out and just like a comic book, like look at them. Um, but yeah, like I have these stacked storage tubs that are uh, flat. So it's not like I'm taking out a massive tub. I'm just taking out like a flat tub of like 50 figures at a time. So yeah, you know, it, it's too bad I can't put them all out there, but you can't display everything like <laughs> you can right. see behind me. Um, but yeah, so our Patreon supporters had some memories of this game. So first up, we have Brian Trong, who says, I was so excited to play a Turtles arcade-style beat-em-up game on a Sega platform. I love the music, colors, animation, and it was so much fun to play as a kid. I didn't care about its flaws. It recycled a lot of stuff from the original arcade game and Turtles in Time. It only had one original level boss, and one whole level that was virtually wasted as a boss rush. Despite those issues, still a blast to play, and I think Hyperstone Heist feels better and slightly faster to play on the Genesis over Turtles in Time on the SNES. Ben Hayward says, I never played this game, but I'm really looking forward to this episode given how many times Barry has said he loves this game. Thank you, Ben. And, you know, we're we're running out of, like, games from the Genesis era that I absolutely loved. I think, like, the last few are, like, Dick Tracy, <laughs> uh, which we will we'll do a whole Dick episode on. Um, Dick Tracy's like it's like Shinobi with guns. It's awesome. Big Dick um, Tracy energy. Big Dick Tracy energy. But uh, you know, the next episode we almost were gonna have to pick it ourselves. But uh, Nicholas Schaefer came in at the last minute. I checked and he added his December pick. And so the next episode I'm gonna be talking about. Sega Sonic the Hedgehog Arcade, a game that you can't play at home, you can emulate, but it's not perfect, but I can drive just 15 minutes away from my house and play it at the Galloping Ghost Arcade, so it looks like I might be making a visit there before our next episode so I can have it fresh in my head. Uh, But yeah, Sonic Ray and Mighty's first adventure will be on the next one, and I thank him for picking that because we always get more clicks when it's a Sonic game, so... uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. And um, George, what are you looking forward to in 2024 for the Sega Talk podcast and for Sega's output as a whole? Well, I would say Infinite Wealth uh, yeah. for myself and the video game that's coming out called Infinite <laughs> Wealth. Um, right. And of course, I would love to uh, cover more Yakuza games. I think we covered mm. Zero and I think maybe the first one. Maybe we didn't even cover the first one. So that would be interesting yeah. to to kind of talk about. Um, yeah. So definitely want to do more Yakuza stuff. Same. All right. Anything you want to add before we leave? Just, uh, I guess one word says it all. Kawabunga. Kawabunga. Bye. <laughs>